Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa Cotton. Welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I provide emotional and mental support for new coaches, content creators, counselors, and entrepreneurs. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the different things that I noticed and wanted to draw attention to from the interview that Oprah had with Harry and Megan. And I think it's so important that we talk about the mental health, but not just the mental health that she was experiencing, but so many other layers that I don't think people are even acknowledging that she experienced through her time and just what she was showcasing in that interview. So stay tuned to the end to hear all my different takeaways and my reactions from the video. So obviously this is just my personal view, my takeaway, and I'm coming from the lens of a mental health provider and a mental health counselor. But I think the most um, thing that I wanna highlight and talk about is the shame around talking about mental health. We have so many resources where we can learn on YouTube. We've got Instagram therapists. We can have access to our own therapists, but there's still a huge amount of shame of acknowledging that you have mental health struggles and acknowledging that you need help with your mental health struggles. And so as we know, like the biggest revelation that we heard in her interview was talking about her feeling like she wanted to no longer be alive. And something that I think it's really important to highlight is especially when people have suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideations, it's not about wanting to die, it's about wanting relief. And as you could see in her interview and you can see in her eyes, she was just longing for relief, wanting to feel safe, wanting to feel like something was going to be there to give her hope, to give her safety. And so as you are looking on your own journey and when you start to navigate your lack of hope for the future or even wanting to no longer be alive, ask yourself, what in my life is giving me safety? And so if we know for her, she didn't have any safety. She didn't have safety from the media. She didn't have safety. I mean, literally her security was taken away from her. So that sense of safety, we as humans, as we know with the Maslow hierarchy of needs, I'll insert here, here. Our basic human needs, safety, we have to feel safe in our environment, we have to feel safe in our world, and if we don't have that safety, we are unable to regulate our emotions. And so for her, she was being isolated from her support system and she didn't have the sense of safety or even just perceived safety whether she was being protected or not her perception which again as we say our perception is our reality her perception was that there was no safety which means she was not able to regulate her emotions and as you can see in the interview she was very detached it's almost as if she was in a dissociative state and a dissociative state is when you are disconnected from your body as if you are somebody else telling your story but it's not about you and you could see there was really lack of emotions it was very matter of fact and as you're hearing this you know i was watching it and i was getting really emotional i was thinking how is she just talking about it as if it was matter of fact and so it sounds like she is experiencing what we call a trauma response. So a trauma response is when your body goes on autopilot and it can detach from the hardship that you're experiencing in order to survive. And so as you can see, she had to dissociate from her feelings to put the mask on. And I know for me, I've had to put my own mask on, whether I had to show up for clients or show up for my family. And so I can only imagine what she had to experience to detach from her emotions in order to show up every day, right? At the speaking engagements or the different tours that she had to go on. And so as you are thinking about your own journey, ask yourself, have you ever had to put that mask on that everything is okay? That Things are roses and butterflies. And what we have taught as a society is to disconnect from the neck down. So we've taught, don't feel your emotions, just keep calm, carry on, and just keep going with the day-to-day -day grind. And as you could see in the interview, she was very detached from that experience, obviously very traumatic and very upsetting. But as she was talking about it, Oprah, you know, had lots of reactions like, what, what? But she was very calm, which tells me that was her trauma response. So 
check out this video here on the five different types of trauma responses and that last trauma response is kind of like you're submitting so you're submitting to defeat of saying like i don't have a narrative i can't control the narrative I can't control what I do, what I say, so I'm just going to essentially collapse. And that's kind of what she did. She collapsed and then what happened is she collapsed so deep that she fell into a depression and there was no hope, there was no sense of safety, there was no sense of a light at the end of the tunnel, which led to her having those suicidal thoughts and those suicidal ideations. I want to really highlight the topic of gaslighting and in that interview she was talking about her experience with her support system, with her family, with her extended family, with her new family that she acquired after marrying into the royal family. But it sounds like she was gaslit the entire experience. And so gaslighting is this idea of changing your reality and changing your perception to make you question if this is what's going on. So an easy way to explain gaslighting is we can see this flower here. And then in a moment you ask me, hey, where did the flowers go? And I respond, what flowers? So then you start to question your reality of what is happening, what is true, what is not true. And as you heard in the entire interview, she was constantly being gaslit. People are saying it's not that bad. Oh, everyone's experienced this. Don't worry, that's just part of being in this family. You're gonna be in the media, you're gonna be in the press. But nobody was validating her feelings and there was a moment in the interview where somebody asked her but how are you feeling not how are you doing what's going on but how are you feeling and you could tell she was like I can no longer put that mask on I have to be honest and she was like I'm not doing good and so if you are ever in a situation where someone is questioning your reality ask yourself could they potentially be gas lighting me and there's so many videos out there of people being gaslit all the time whether that's from your employer i used to have a boss that used to do that to me all the time he would tell me go do this in some client's chart or go work on this project do all these things and then i would talk to my other coworkers about getting help and he would say i never told you that what are you talking about that never happened and i was like i have very very clear memory of this experience happening and so that constant form of questioning your reality questioning your perception and you can see that she was so naive in the experience of what was expected out of her that she was trusting everybody else's voice and everybody else's opinion and she stopped looking inward and when we stop looking inward we start to question everything because we are no longer in tuning to our intuition but luckily she decided that i am going to look inward and i'm going to listen to my intuition and something that i would love if everyone could just hear is when you listen to your intuition and you listen to your inner voice, you become unstoppable because you put your needs first and you are allowed to get out of toxic environments. And I think the biggest thing that you can learn from that interview between Megan and Harry is no matter who the family members are, if they are toxic and they are no longer providing safety for you, it is okay to step away. And so for me, it was very eye-opening in the idea that if someone can step away from the monarch we know has been around for centuries, this lineage, this way of living, that means we as everyday Commonwealth people, we can choose our own happiness. We can choose to step away from toxic relationships, toxic family members, because we do not have to subject ourselves to being traumatized and hurt over and over again so the last thing that i want to highlight is if you notice this and i'm going to post the image here when she was with her chickens her entire demeanor changed her energy changed even just her facial expressions because in that interview i believe and i've worked with thousands of clients she was in a trauma response she was in that i can't give emotions i can't react i can't say this was outrageous this is crazy can anybody believe me she was very calm and very like soft-spoken as 
I believe she was in her trauma response. And as you saw the interview switch, when she went to her home, she was in her comfy clothes, she was in her home environment, she had her husband there, and when Oprah was there with the chickens, her entire energy changed, even just her facial expressions. And so that tells me she was no longer in her trauma response, but she was back in her body, listening to her intuition and taking those steps that she needed to continue feeling safe. My name is Alyssa Cotton and I work with coaches, new content creators, entrepreneurs, and counselors to provide emotional and mental support. If you'd love to learn more, I'd love for you to join my free masterclass on how to find your own inner compass. And if we can learn anything from Megan is you can choose the life you want that's going to allow you to have your voice, feel safe, and be happy. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. And if you like that video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I will catch you in the next video. Have a great day.